your undivided attention. He said, and the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and had sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. I read again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives. So he must prayer. Is preaching deliverance we find in this scripture is from the Greek word called aphesis, and this I've taught us before. But for the purpose of today's teaching, we'll look through them again. Is the Greek word aphesis, and it simply means to be forgiven, it means to have remission of sins, and it means to be rescued, and if you please, to have freedom. And it is used in scripture nine times for remission of sins. Six times for forgiveness of sin, and once as deliverance of sin. And you may wonder, Pastor, why are you saying all of these things? I want you to just stay with me for a moment. In Luke's Gospel, in chapter 1, verse 77, Luke's Gospel, 177, he was, it was used as remission of sin. Luke 1, 7 and 7, 77. And hear what the Bible says of Jesus. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. The word aphesis means that when one receives forgiveness of sin, a remission of sin is what we refer to as deliverance. So it follows that deliverance is not when people throw up in church. Deliverance is not when people break chairs in church. Deliverance actually is when people move from one kingdom to another kingdom. Colossians in chapter 1 verse 12, 13 and 14. Religion taught us what uh, deliverance is all about. But let's look at what the Bible has to say about deliverance. Because deliverance is a forgiveness of sin. Deliverance is a remission of sin. Deliverance is freedom from sin. And of course, it's pardon for sin. One has been rescued from the claws of the devil. It's what is called deliverance. It's a giving thanks to the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So the saints are in light. Who hath that's an old King James word. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. So as many persons that are still in darkness, they have not been delivered. But delivered people are not in darkness. Amen. Am I communicating? Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and then and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So deliverance is moving from one kingdom to another kingdom. And that is what the Bible teaches. The Bible says, who hath, it's not about who hath. And the Bible uses the word delivered. That is in the past tense. The devil cannot be in the same temple where the Holy Spirit shares. The Bible says, your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That follows that the child of God cannot be possessed. The child of God may be obsessed or oppressed, but the child of God cannot be possessed. The work of the child of God is that anywhere you see the devil, cast him out. He says in Mark's gospel in chapter 16, the signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they cast out devils. So the casting out of devil has been misconstrued to mean deliverance today. Do we believe in casting out devils? Yes. But that, does that translate to deliverance? No. Can I say that again? Do we believe in casting out of devils? Yes. But does it translate to deliverance? No. Because deliverance is a movement from one kingdom to the other. But that's not my subject today. But just to drive on the point that deliverance is preached, deliverance is not dramatized. Can I say that again? Deliverance is preached. Deliverance is not dramatized. Jesus said the spirit of the Lord was upon him to preach the deliverance to the captive. So a captive, a man who is bound in darkness does not need prayer he needs preaching and the preaching of the gospel and the opening of people's eyes to what the gospel is all about is what deliverance actually means have me squeeze your neighbors and say i believe the pastor is talking to you this morning so deliverance as it is has nothing to do with people vomiting in church as a matter of fact it's an insult when i see people being put on a montage on tv program and you see a woman spinning around and breaking everything 
and train up the first question i ask if that woman were to be your mother would you allow that woman to be used for your montage you are dehumanizing that woman stay with me for a moment luke 24 and verse number 47 luke 24 and verse 47 i just go through a few scriptures and i trust god you are living here blessed today Ooh, i'm excited already he said and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name so when people have a message preached that their sins are forgiven which is aphesis is deliverance so deliverance is rescue is when one hears the gospel of jesus christ his death his burial his resurrection his exaltation that is what brings deliverance and it comes as a result of the fact that our sins have been forgiven and so jesus talking to the disciples that what must be preached in his name is the remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations squeeze somebody and say pastor is talking to you let's check something out again in ephesians and chapter 1 verse 7 please I'm only trying to lay blocks because where I'm going to is not here. Where I'm going to is to establish something in your heart to help you in what I'll be teaching. In whom we have redemption. The word have is a possessive word. Redemption is our possession today. Through his blood, what do we have? The forgiveness of sins. The aphesis. The deliverance. According to the riches of his grace. So my sins are forgiven. Look at your neighbor and say, my sins are forgiven. Turn to your other neighbor and say, your sins are forgiven. And that was corroborated in Colossians 1.14. Paul also talked about it. That Colossians we just read in verse 14 of Colossians 1. He said, in whom we have redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. To redeem means to buy something back. So you were once in a different kingdom. But through the forgiveness of sin, you've been translated to another kingdom look at your neighbor and say pastor is talking to you now you see jesus talks about forgiveness amongst believers and forgiveness must be carried out within the confine of what we have enjoyed if i've enjoyed forgiveness i should be willing to dispense forgiveness to anybody who for any reason hurts me the way out of the prison of lack of peace the way out of the prison of bitterness the way out of the prison of unrest is called forgiveness many of us are carrying around scars and some even have fresh wounds from other people who have offended us or let us down or hurt us some ways we have believers today who cannot greet another believer we have believers today who feel hurt because of the way another believer spoke to him or her we have believers today that each time you see your brother or your sister, you forgot that you came from the same womb. And what happens to you? Something dies in you. You come with bitterness. There are people when you see them, your mood changes. The reason your mood changes is because you remember an offense. You remember one hurt or the other. You remember one wound you have been carrying about. Friends, I want you to know, God has provided a way for us to find healing from all the pains and hurt. It is called forgiveness. It is the basis of finding joy and peace in our lives. There are many persons who will never find joy. They will never find peace in life because they will not let go of what others have done to them. But they forgot also that they enjoyed forgiveness from God. In Romans and chapter 5 verse 8, I want you to see it. Because most times we want to give condition for forgiveness. What did I say? We want to give condition for forgiveness. And I'd like for us to read it together. Everybody look up one to go. For commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet we are tap your neighbor say don't wait until people come to you before you forgive them tap your neighbor say why you were a sinner jesus did not wait for you he died for you learn to forgive even when the one who has done hurt to you has not come to apologize jesus did not wait for mankind to apologize the bible says, why we were yet sinners when we had no thought of god he died for us because today what we do is that the brother never said sorry and as such i will never let go 
But you forget, as long as you say, I will never let go, you remain there too. Because the man who holds a child down remains down until he releases that child. The way up is to let go of people that you are holding down. Tap your neighbor and say, the way up is to let go of people you are holding down. Say to your neighbor, forgiveness is not an option, it is a command. Ephesians and chapter number 32, I would like, I'd like to start from 31 or 30. And then 32 will be my emphasis. Because if we have enjoyed forgiveness, we have no reason on earth not to let go of any man. Oh man, thou art inexcusable. Because no matter how you try to garnish the reason why you will not let go of a particular heart, you are inexcusable. Because why we were yet sinners. The measure of our forgiveness should be the measure of forgiveness we have enjoyed. Write that down. The measure of our forgiveness of others should be based on the measure of forgiveness we have enjoyed. If we truly have enjoyed forgiveness from Jesus Christ, it will not be difficult to let go of people. Stop holding people down. Stop holding yourself down by holding people down. Stop walking in bitterness. Bitterness will defile you. Stop walking in bitterness. It will corrupt you. Stop walking in bitterness. It will release a bind inside of you that we, as a matter of fact, desecrate all the things inside of you. Learn to let go of that heart and free yourself from the unrest. Free yourself from that heart, from the wound, and enjoy the peace that Christ has brought to your heart. Squeeze your neighbors and say, I know pastor is talking to you. <laughs> Ephesians and chapter 4, reading from verse 30. Everywhere is coming, this Presbyterian church. Because we are remembering the people that have done hurt to us. He said, I'm a fool. Now, if he said you are a fool and you know you are not a fool, let go of that. But you get hurt truly when he called you a fool and you accepted that you are a fool, you will have a reason to remain hurt. But if you have not accepted you are a fool, you have a reason to let go. Did you hear what I just said? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are seed unto the day of redemption. Next verse. Let all, how many bitterness? And what? And what again? And what again? You know what clamor is? You tell brother Silas, you tell our brother there, you tell Raphael, you tell our brother Jackson, you come to Pastor, uh, Pastor, Pastor Combs, you come to Pastor uh, Barry, you come to Mama. He said, let me tell you what she did to me. And look at, and now, do you know what you are just doing? You are sowing more wicked seed in the heart of those people. Look up. I will not use any other person as an example. I'll use myself. I pastored in Royals of Grace by the grace of God for about eight years. I was in charge of discipleship and uh, education. And I taught foundation class and discipleship class. Please look up. And what happened one day, I came back from my place of work, went to set tests for my students. And on getting there, I didn't want them to pull out papers from their notebooks. So I ran to the admin office. And I had asked the woman there, could you please give me some papers so that these people can use for their examination? And this woman rebuffed me, answered me in a very rude manner. And I felt so pain, but I left there all the same. Immediately I left there, I got to the class, and I asked that the students should pull out their uh, uh, paper from their notebook they will use for their test. I know you are so interested in my story. I can see your rapt attention. All the same, we can go ahead with it. And then, shortly after that, I wouldn't know what that woman had reported to my senior pastor, my father in the Lord. And so, he sent for me. And I got back to him. I said, Papa, he said, that he's what happened. And I was shocked the woman was there. She had gone to lay complaint about me. And immediately I got there and I said my own side of the story. And the woman said her side of the story. And my pastor understood. He shook his head. He asked the woman to go. And as the woman left, he asked me, Pastor Hiss, how many persons have you told? I said, as I went back, Bishop Ken and Bishop Chris asked me what happened. And I told them. He said, do you realize you are going to sow a negative seed of this woman in their heart? He said, the same way you sowed it, go on and uproot it. Because when you clamor about people, you are trying to dent their image before other people they have not hurt. And you create a picture in the heart of those people. Even when they have not done hurt to those people, they deal with that person based on what you have told them. You are clamoring. You move from one spot to the other. Have you heard what Pabe did to me? Have you heard what this man did to you? And you move with that heart. And when you reconcile with that person, you don't actually go back to the same people again. So then, then that story I told you, there is another side of the story. You clamor over little things. Help me tell somebody, say, I repent from me today. Can I say something to you? You never go up by trying to bring anybody down. 
Can I say that again? You never go up by trying to bring another person down. Can I say it so that you hear it very well? You never go up by trying to bring any other person down. If you were down, when you started bringing the person down, you remained down. As a matter of trying to bring people down, you are sending yourself down. So climb on! Stop, stop that. Bishop Ken related to me an issue that happened in school in those days. And there was this sister who was the organizing secretary. And the secretary of the fellowship of Nifeth was asked to go talk to this sister over a program that was coming forth. And immediately the secretary got there. The organizing secretary yelled at this secretary, shouted him down, spoke to him roughly. And this guy got angry, went back, and he came to report to the president. President, can you imagine what this sister did to me? He, she yelled at me, shouted me down. Would you allow me to say a word? And guess what the president said? The president said, go back and tell her that you are sorry. He said, excuse me, you didn't hear what I said. Let me explain it to you. This is how it happened. I didn't do anything. I just asked her about the program. And instead of me getting a polite answer, she yelled at me and did all of this. He said, I heard you well. Go back and tell her that you are sorry. Now, this is the story. She, he went back and told the sister, sister, over what happened, I am sorry. Upon saying that, the sister broke down in tears and started crying. Say, why are you crying? Say, I ought to tell you I'm sorry. The man who says sorry is not a weakling. The man who says sorry is the height of maturity. Am I communicating here? The woman broke down, started crying. But do you know that brother would have left? Hmm. And then, before you know, bitterness will start. When they see each other, something dies in them. <clears throat> something will just die in you. Friends, I want you to know that clamoring, evil speaking, be put away from you. With how many malice? With how many malice? I can't reconcile it. We are from the same womb. No matter how you quarrel with your biological brother or sister, you can never separate that person from being a, a member of your family. And that is the least compared to the family of Christ where we find ourselves. We are born not with physical genes. We are born with spiritual genes. And our gene is an everlasting one. The physical one, anybody can die and go. But when we talk about our brotherhood, it is a spiritual one. Even if we leave this world, we'll continue our relationship. Am I communicating? And you can imagine, two brothers will never say hello to each other. Two sisters, they are angry in the church. And they say the power of God is no longer in this church. Unknown to them, they quench the power of God. Tap your neighbor, say don't use your malice to quench the power of God here. Nobody is talking. Check your neighbor. If your neighbor is not checking, talk to your neighbor very well. Say I'm sure because of you, this message. Next verse. Next verse. And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Be soft hearted. Don't carry mm. the people's call it Iwe Dinobi. Bitterness from ages to ages. You carry it on, you pass it to your children. Your children will pass it on to their children. No man has been given an award for being the most successful bitterness expert. No man. And I speak to you from the point of someone who has been robbed of it. I, I used to be the king of malice many years ago. Thank you, Jesus, for my life today. In those days when I was in school, when I have a quarrel with my friends, I'm excited. Because not playing with them gives me opportunity to read. And then I grew up with that. Even as a Christian, as a pastor, I struggled with it. And I thank God, not because I want to add feather to my wife's cap, but God used her to humble me. Those early days in my marriage, very little thing, I would spark, and then she's come. Then by the following morning, I feel so bad. And I say, I'm sorry. She said, what happened? I said, don't pretend. Because I used to, I, I used to believe, let's face the issue. I said, what? what? She asked, we, she asked, what happened? I said, don't pretend. That thing that happened yesterday. He said, no, I can't remember it. He said, no, you remembered it. Something happened yesterday. And she says to me, before I got married, I told myself one thing. That anything that happened, and I sleep over to the next day, I will not visit it again. So, with that, the king of malice became a boy. From there, he became a child. From there, he repented fully. And malice is gone today. I want you to know 
you make up your mind. If the other person wants to keep malice, never you keep record of such things. Because love never keep record of wrongs. Squeeze your neighbor's hand and say, love never keep records of wrongs. You know what happened in 1952? That early time when we got married, do you know what happened? The other time, do you know what happened? Those early days of this church. Sometimes I'll get angry with my wife. I step out of my house. My wife will say, come back. Why are you rushing? You are angry. I don't know. Don't you know I'm an Edoma? We don't take that nonsense. Marriage is a ground where you take nonsense so that you can be sensible. What did I call it? If you are not taking nonsense, you can't marry. Hello? Boo, did you hear that? Everywhere is calm now. And then sometimes I, I leave the house with boldness. And then I boast. Are you my God? I'm anointed. The hand of God is upon me. Is it? The way you are going, that's how you will come back home. And I say, even if it's a call, I burn you. I burn you, I will use that one. You know, man has ego. Yeah. All of you are, pro that's why I use myself. Yeah. We have ego. We don't want to let, to let go. No, no, you're not my God. And I step out that day, return the way I step out. Nothing added to my life. <laughs> Nothing added to my life. And then I come back with much bitterness. The bitterness I left with was 20%. This time I ran because nothing happened in my life. I'm coming with 80% bitterness. But in that bitterness, I calmed down. They are fine now. They say, I'm fine. Now, it's me looking for peace now. Because I don't want to return back that way. If your husband is close to you, or your wife is close to you, I say, ask that I hope you hear what pastor is saying. Hallelujah. Brother Geoffrey, are you understanding what we are saying? <laughs> Ernest, are you hearing what we are saying? <laughs> my friend, not West, my friend, I hope you hear what we are saying. Hallelujah. Look at verse 32. See, all of you like my own story. When we hear your story, we'll run out of this place. <laughs> And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. I want you to take in a deep breath. You know what I'm saying? All those hearts you had, drop it. Can you take a deep breath? Breathe in. Out. Come on, let's go. Pastor, just like that. Just like that too. Free yourself. What did I say? Just like that. Just free yourself. Breathe in. Out. Look up now. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Why will it be written that we should forgive? Because there will be occasion where we hurt each other. Can I say that again? Forgiving one another is written here because there will be occasion where we hurt one another. If I have not done hurt to you in this church, Forgive me ahead of time because I will hurt you one day. But make up your mind, my heart will not cause bitterness in your heart. Bishop Oyedekbo said this many years ago. He said, I have a bank of forgiveness. So much so that those who have not forgiven me, who have not hurt me, are forgiving them ahead of time. The man who forgives frees himself and refuses to be in bondage. Can I say that again? The man who forgives frees himself and refuses to be in bondage. Because when you refuse to forgive, you, bondage, you put yourself in bondage. Am I speaking to somebody? Look up again. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving. Now, how should we forgive one another? Silo, how should we forgive one another? Can they project it again? Can, how can we forgive one another? Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven. So, how I forgive is how Christ forgave. How did Christ forgive? He did not just give his life. He did not wait for us to say we are sorry. How should we forgive? Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. You know, we need to let this sink in our heart. If we have enjoyed forgiveness, we should be ready to give forgiveness to people. How many of us have received forgiveness today? We don't forgive people so that we can be forgiven. We forgive people because we have been forgiven. 
If we value the worth of forgiveness in our lives, it will not be difficult for us to dispense forgiveness to others. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Say, neighbor, stop thinking that this message is meant for sister X or brother Y. This message is for you. Somebody say amen to that. In Matthew and chapter number 18, if you read from verse 21, they asked Jesus, how often should I forgive my neighbor? Jesus said, and paraphrasing it, 70 times 70 times, you forgive. And that is absurd because no one person will want to step on your toes for 490 times in a day. Do you know what God is saying? There are no boundaries to forgiveness. Can I say that again? There are no boundaries to forgiveness. Because if a sister hurt my feet or hurt me now, one, and she crosses again, two, three, she's hurting me, telling me sorry, I will be stupid to leave my leg there. I should withdraw my leg, isn't it? Do not hold people bound in your heart. To the extent you extend it to their husband, to their wife, to their children, to everyone that are connected to them. These are not the virtue of Christ. Like Colossians, we say, we have not so learned Christ. That is not what we have learned in Christ. What we've learned in Christ has nothing to do with that. When you forgive, you are not pretending that evil never took place. Making excuses for other people's bad behavior or you are justifying their evil. That's not what it, it says. When you forgive, you are not just trying to say, I'm pretending that evil never took place. That's not true. Evil took place. But you forgive because you have enjoyed forgiveness irrespective of what that person has done. The man who forgives frees himself and refuses to be in bondage. Somebody say amen to that. You are not trying to justify it. You are not trying to make excuses for people's bad behavior. People will hurt you big time. Some people have very cruel and terrible behavior. But free yourself. Squeeze your neighbors and say, free yourself. Yeah. There are people you cannot help. Just free yourself. No matter what you do, if they, are, if they have not been well cultured, if they have not been well taught, no matter what you do, the person will continue in that lifestyle and you'll be hurting yourself. The last thing you will do is that the person who caused hurt in your heart is living freely and you are living in bondage. Have you noticed that some people you are holding grudges against, they have forgotten you. You are the one who is remembering them. Why take Panadol on another person's problem? Tap your neighbor. Say, Pastor is asking you a question. Would you wait to get that answer? So forgiveness is a decision we make on our inside. To refuse to live in the past. When I forgive, what I do, I'm making a decision. And of course, inside of me to refuse to live in the past. Most of the things that we struggle about with people are things that actually happened in the past. And if the Bible says, forgetting the things which are behind, let's press forward to the things that are before. Am I communicating? Because forgiveness actually deals with the hurt people carry for the past. But when we forgive, we are making a decision on our inside. So it's a choice to release others from their sins against you that you can be set free. It breaks the cycle of bitterness. When I forgive, I break the cycle of bitterness. Tap your neighbor. When I forgive, when I, forgive I break the cycle of bitterness. Who is still in church today? Everywhere is quiet in this Presbyterian church. Can I prophesy? The Lord will bless you. The Lord will increase you. But God is doing it not because you forgive or you didn't forgive. He blesses you whether or not you do this. But it will do you a whole lot of good when you let go of people. Can I hear an amen from someone? Amen. Now the church is alive this morning. Let's read back again. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. He said, several times. Several he said, it is seven times. Next verse. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, unto several times. What was Jesus saying? Can we look through the screen? Media, help us. Otherwise, we, revert, we forgive them, isn't it? Because it's not intentional. 
God's blessings are intentional. Open your Bible without the, without the screen, there is a Bible. And don't get lazy with the screen. Matthew 18. All right. We've just read verse 21. Verse 21, say, 22. Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king, which would take account of his servant. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. And for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment be made. The servant therefore fell down, and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay all, I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the, that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt, but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that, that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into the prison. He, t he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all thy debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wrought, and delivered him to the tormentors. To who? <laughs> Till he should pay all that he was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses are we still in church this morning everywhere is calm in this church let's sing the lord is in the holy temple let the earth remain silent say amen amen nobody is ready you, you must let go of that brother. You must let go of that sister. I'm using the word must. Because your nature does not accept unforgiveness. Your nature is a nature that has received forgiveness. And that nature gives forgiveness. I won't let go of my uncle. I won't let go of my aunt. I won't let go of my father. I won't let go of my mother. I won't let go of my wife. All these people who have hurt me. I wanted to marry this woman. Nobody supported me. I will hate them forever. No. Thank God you have eventually married the woman. Move on with your life. Love them. If they even did that, they were trying to protect you. Not because they hated you. Squeeze your neighbors and say, this particular one is for you. Who is the first to say amen here? Are we still in church today? So forgiveness is our nature. It's our nature. Each time we refuse to walk in forgiveness... We are not living up to our DNA. Our DNA is G-O-D. He forgave us when we didn't ask for. He forgave us and sent his son to die for us when we were not thinking about it. How God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I would like for you to stand up for a moment. I'm not true yet. Would you stand up, obey the last order? Stand up for a moment. Go straight to your neighbor. Go straight to your neighbor. Look for a neighbor. Say, I've forgiven you longest time. I bear no grudges. I bear no oath against you. 
I love you sincerely. I break the cycle of bitterness out of my life. The cost of forgiveness may be in canceling of debt. That money you have been owing me. I don't know why you didn't want to pay me. I forgive you. But if you have it, do return it. Let go of wrong that you have suffered. Don't desire revenge. Don't desire revenge. Vengeance belongs to God. Let God do his work. You do your work. I love you. You may be seated. Are we seeing the Presbyterian church today? Oh, we are in Vinefield Church. You know what I just did? I needed to help some people take some steps. God, keep my mother-in-law. I stand today, your mother-in-law will live long. Yeah. Your mother-in-law is not your, your problem. Keep my father-in-law. It's not your problem. They will live long. Your problem is you refuse to let go of them. That my brother-in-law, when I came for marriage, he kept his face straight. He didn't want me. I can't be talking, you are talking. He kept his face straight. I knew he hated me. You have married now. You never do. Let go of that man. Did you hear what I just said now? Hmm. My mother-in-law. When my husband took me to introduce, to say, Mama, this is the woman I want to marry. My mother-in-law pretended as well. She never saw me. Remove her face. That is why no matter how much I have, she will not eat one naira. After this service, go and buy a gift. Dasha. If for nothing, that man you are enjoying today, she gave birth to that man. Those of you who are not relating with your mother-in-law, I beg you after this service, buy them a gift. What did I say? Now even if you are relating with them, buy them another gift. When they ask, why did you buy this gift? Say, pastor commanded me to buy for you. So that they will also like pastor. Let them know that you are hearing good message. Uh -huh. Question. If you don't have father-in-law, mother-in-law, there are those in the family who play that role. Brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Buy them that gift. If you don't have any of them, you have pastor-in-law. <laughs> Do you have pastor-in-law? Bring the gift to me. I say to pastor, I don't have brother-in-law. I don't have sister-in-law. I don't have mother-in-law. I don't have father-in-law. I have pastor-in-law. If there's no pastor-in-law, I can cut it today. Glory be to God forever. But by all means, don't hold anybody to your heart. How many of you understand what we are saying? By all means, free yourself. Before they put you in bondage, you free yourself. There are people who deliberately want to put you in bondage. You free yourself. Live above it. Live above it. There are people whose mission it is, uh, their mission is to hurt you. They want to see you walking by bitterness. You tell yourself, I consciously walk out of it. Because I have enjoyed forgiveness, I will not let those things hurt me. Emeka, are you meditating now? Stop meditating and listen to me. Hello. He said, you see that man, during my wedding, the only thing he could give to me was handkerchief. Only God knows his state financially as at the time you were getting married. Why do you crucify him because of that little gift? If you let go of that man, he may be the one that will buy you a car. Let go and let God. What did I say? Let go and let go. Can we say that together? Let go. When I was in need of money, that man refused to give to me. The following day, I saw him, he bought a car. That money was already budgeted. You didn't work the money for the man. Why carrying unforgiveness against that man? If you are angry with the man, did the man stop you from having your own money? No, answer me. Did the man stop you from getting your own money? Why will you get angry over another man's money? Is it your own? The man can choose to give to you and not to give to you. Are we in church? 
I came to address real issues today. What did I say? I came to address real issues. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Always. Hallelujah. My Lord is good. See that idiot. It don't go better for you. My Lord is good. No. No, don't live like that. Don't live like that. Can I hear an amen from somebody? Oh, somebody telling that they love him. Lift your hands together and pray. You leave your seat because you don't talk with that person. You run to the back. Oh, somebody, somebody telling that you love him. And you are still using one corner eye to look at the person you left. Lift your hands together. Idiot. You are the one that made me to run to this. Um, if you are very unfortunate, you meet a brother who does not brush his teeth well and who does not... Who is not wearing deodorant? By the time you oh, salva, and something flies out from him. You know, say, Chai! This is the reason I am suffering this thing. No, it's all forgiveness that is making you suffer those things. And then the sister just does like this. The stench that comes out from here. Nobody sent you to go and perceive the stench. It is unforgiveness. All you should have just done is use that opportunity while you were singing that song. Oh, Samba, I forgive you. It hurts, it hurts, but I just let go. Let the person know it hurts, but I just let go. I need to free myself. And the person is wondering, you forgive me. I remember you. Have you noticed the people you carry, they don't remember you? If you are telling me, I, I forgive you. Now you the struggle now. Nothing concerns me. I live my life. <laughs> Three of us. The people you hold on to, they don't remember you. You see them and your heart will sink. They see you and they move past you. You are the one suffering. Tap your neighbor and say, stop the punishment. Stop the punishment. You are inflicting yourself. With pains. Half. Glory be to God forever. As pastor said anything today. What should be the measure of our forgiveness? The same way God in Christ forgave us. Should be the measure. He said the man has not written a letter of apology. And I need three page letters. It should be in three pages. One in Guardian newspaper. The other one in Thai newspaper. One regional paper. And then I need a local one. Beacon. Beacon newspaper. Those ones they can lie. Is it bacon? It's gone. They lie, lie too much now. Put one there. When you put one there, I will not know that your forgiveness, I will start processing your forgiveness. I feel for you. The person that has written, he has forgotten you are the one carrying the pains. Let's ask a question. The people you actually hold in your heart, let's be frank, is it not because you have advantage over them, that's why you are holding them? There are rich men who have done you hurt. You forgive them because of what you can get. Can we talk in church? Can we talk in church? There are people who are financially more positioned or better positioned than you. If they hurt you, even if you are angry, but because of L.Y., you still go back. L.Y. Coco. You see? <clears throat> Meanwhile, another person who is not as rich as that person has not done the least to you. He went to Nobi Nigeria Limited. You are angry, you want to call the word for, for that person. But let that person have Iwe. You know we are in the query land, so we must use that line. This is Rumu Vinefield. So we must use, we can't use Kudi here. We can't use Ego. Uh, we can use Ikwere. We can use the neighboring uh, LGAs here. Uh, Bigi. Bigi Nale. Bigi Le. Bigi Le. Money Day. Once you see Ewa, no matter what the man said to you, no, my, my uncle, that's how he used to talk. Now lie, that's not how he used to talk. You accepted the way he talked because of what you can gain. If another person who is not financially stable talk to you that way, then you say, do you know who you are talking to? Like a man did to us in the bus many years ago. He said, do, he said, do you know who I am? He said, who do you think you is? Who do you think you is? Then you ask, who do you think you is? Because the man has no money. Don't want to speak it outside. Do you, think, do you know who, it, uh, who do you think you is? It's not a good English. Did you hear what I just said? It was in the bus. Bus English. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Can you breathe in? Feel it. Breathe in. Out. Say, I let go. Archie, say, I let go. Say, I let go. People who are on you, 
There are some debt we call them bad debt. What did I call it? Instead of breaking your head, even if you cut that person, the blood that will come out will not be 10,000 naira. And the person is owing you 20, uh, maybe 2 million. Why are you killing yourself? You all look at the person, think of a way to help that person and move on. I'll give you my story before we close. Many years ago, someone had collected money from me. And this is what I do. Don't give out what you cannot let go. Can I say that again? Don't give out what you can't let go. Anything that when you give out, and if it's not returned, the sky should drop down. Don't give it. Give out what, even if they don't return it, your life is not shaking. What did I say? Your life is not shaking. And so, a brother had asked me, excuse me, can I have some, some money from you? The money was not mine. It was my younger sister's money. I showed him. It's not mine. It's my younger sister's own. She asked me to keep it. But since you are in their need of it, take. I showed him all the transfers. So he knows that I was not lying. And to take seriously what I was giving to him. Took years. The money wouldn't come. There were days I got into my car. And I would drive straight to his house in D-Line. Say, today you must pay this money. As soon as I get there. I'll just call the brother by name. Let's say brother X. Because I won't mention name. Uh, brother X, I came for that money. Pastor, his God just brought you at the right time. I said, yes, what happened? He said, look at this company. They've in, 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 they called me for interview. They have interviewed me. They employed me as their project manager. They will show me the test. Pastor, I want you to help me pray. So that this job will reach in my hand. I went to draw my debt, but I will end up living there with prayer points. <laughs> are we in church today please pray for me I want them to give me this job I need this job badly is it the man that needs job badly that you want to ask pay me my money No, are you, am I communicating now sometimes even if I have money I say take for transport fare because the people that are owing you better pray for them to have because if they don't have your money will not come so I will leave there with prayer point I will pray over time, he began to service that debt. And once he cleared it. Some years ago, he came to Vinefield Church, flew in from Lagos. He said, God gave me this money, and I felt I should bring it to this church. I brought a huge amount of money. That's one. Two, I was to marry my wife. I remember going to him, give me money now. I don't have money. He said, Pastor, he said, I don't have money. But I have this 5,000. But I'll call my uncle, who is a commander in the Navy there. Since you needed money to put up in the hotel, no problem. He called the big man, and then we drove to Calabar. Getting there, I lost a tire. I saw military people. They helped me in jacking my tire. I was a big boy because I was with the commander. Then they organized the tire, brought the exec my Jetta executive, and they did everything. And the man lodged us in the big place. We were giving the, the treat of our life. What if I had spoiled the relationship because the person was owing me? And today, we still have the best of relationship. That people owe you does not mean you should spoil that relationship. It can turn around anytime. Bow down your heads and talk to God.